Welcome. We're just going to go a review of the Seder, the night of Pesach. So there are a few things that we have to know to, to prepare beforehand. I'm just going to go over quickly. We're not going to go through the whole Seder. It'll take an hour long. First of all, we're going to go through the Seder plate. Whether you have a plate or you don't have a plate, doesn't matter. We're just going to go through the things that we need. Before the Seder plate, you have to have matzah. Matzah could be either a round, handmade one. If you don't have a round, a round one, handmade one, you can get a square one, machine made. As long as it's matzah, that's not rice bread, kosher for Passover, it's okay. Now, on the, 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 plate, the, the Seder plate, whoever leads the Seder should have three matzahs. Three. Between each matzah, if you don't have a matzah cover, it's okay. Today's time, we have to do what we have. We put a napkin between each matzah, three matzahs. The three matzahs are representative of the three categories of Kohen, Levi, and Yisrael. You have three matzahs. Can hear. of a chicken or a wing of a chicken or a neck of a chicken. Any one of these items are good for Zroya. You can have either one. Zroya is represent it represents the korban, the, the, uh, the uh, sacrifice for Pesach. So either it could be a wing of a chicken or a neck of a chicken or a drumstick of a chicken. That's all what Zroya. On the left side will be beitza, an egg. An egg represents two meanings. There was a second, there was a second sacrifice that was brought every Yom Tov called Korban Chagiga. So the egg is for Korban Chagiga. Another reason is because egg is a, is a uh, food that's eaten, a person who is mourning eats an egg. And here we are mourning the destruction of the temple that we don't have the uh, Beit HaMikdash, we don't have the Mizbeach, so we have an egg. The center would go maror, bitter herbs. A bitter herbs, today's time, you can get either the real horseradish or you can get something which is, has the, the, uh, the bitter, the roots of bitter, like endives or romaine letters. Most popular today's time to be the romaine letters. You put some of them on the center. So we have now right, left, and center. And this, this is the second, the second part would be again, right, left, and center. Charoises, charoises. Charoises, there's, there's many ways how to make them. Some make them very sweet, and I'll, I'll explain. The idea of the charoises, the charoises is supposed to look like mortar, the cement that the, the, uh, when the Jews were in Egypt, they were forced, forced labor to build cities and towers, and they had to have, they had to make their own bricks, and they had to make their own mortar cement to collect the bricks. So the charoises is supposed to look like cement. But it has to be made out of, out of ingredients that each ingredient somewhere in the, in the Tanakh is compared to the Jews. So what we use for the charoset is walnuts, ground, or a, a piece of walnuts, apples, some use add pears, and some like to add dates. And then we add it with wine, red wine, and we make this, we make this mix, and this is called the charoset. We, we lay down, we use it for dipping in. Then we have the carpas. Carpas is a vegetable, could be either parsley, celery, or onion. Any one of those, parsley, celery, or onion. And the final one is chazeret. Chazeret means the repeat. We repeat the maror again. Maror is again, is the bitter herbs. The bitter herbs could be the horseradish, the endives, or the romaine letters. And here we repeat it again. But this is the karda, this the items. Again, we have the three matzot and the six items of the karda. Then we have to be, we have to prepare wine. Now, a whole year, any wine, kosher wine, is good. For Passover, it's preferred to have red wine, unless you like white white wine better and it's better tasting for you. is okay, but it's preferred to have red wine. Why red? The color red 
would remind us to present the blood that the, uh, the Egyptians were bathing in the Jewish blood. So as a reminder of that, we have wine, red wine. And we can use that for the four cups of the uh, Seder. Now we have here in the Haggadah, in the beginning of the Haggadah, the first commentary of the Bible was written by a uh, rabbi named Rashi, Rabbi Shlomo Yitzchak Rashi, Rashi's commentary. Rashi felt necessary that in the beginning of the Haggadah, he gave us a 15 points, which we all sing, Rashi gave us 15 pointers to remember what we're supposed to do that night. These 15 pointers are the order of the whole night. So each one has a meaning what we're going to do. So we're going to just go over the 15 pointers, and that's going to be the whole Seder. I want to mention something that's brought down in the code of law that there used to be Jews that didn't have Haggadah. They were in prison or they're elsewhere. They're alone. Or like today's times, they were quarantined. They don't have no books, no Haggadah Shal Pesach. So the, the code of law says, if you open up the, the Chumash, the book of Exodus, and you just read one of the chapters of the Exodus, that's okay. As long as you read the story of the Exodus on the night of Pesach. So let's go through the 15 pointers of the Seder, which we begin with the song of Kadesh, Or Chatz, Karpas, Yachatz. These are 15 pointers. The first point is Kadesh. Kadesh means Kiddush. Every Friday night and every beginning of a holiday, Kiddush and a cup of wine. And a Yom Tov Kiddush is different than the Kiddush of Shabbat. You have to look in the Haggadah to follow what we're supposed to say of the Kiddush of, of Yom Tov. In addition to Kiddush, every Yom Tov we say another bracha of Shehecheyanu. Shehecheyanu, we thank Hashem that gave us the life to, to reach this point. Now, women who, who, who made the bracha on the candles before the Kiddush, they make a bracha on the Shabbat candles or the Yom Tov candles. They would make the Shechianu on the candles. Once they make the Shechianu on the candles, they don't have to make the Shechianu again on the Kiddush. It's the same thing. Women make the Shechianu on the candles when they accept the, the, the Chag. Men make it during the Kiddush. So we make Kaddish means Kiddush and the Shechianu. Next pointer is Ur Chatz. Usually we wash our Rabbi. hands. Rabbi, okay, but like um, if we're doing it, if we're doing it alone and we do it over the Shabbat candle, then we don't say it if we make kiddush. We would not say shecheyanu when we make kiddush. If you make shecheyanu while you light the candles, you don't have to make shecheyanu by the kiddush. You already did that. Okay. Uh, the next item is urchats. We wash our hands. Usually, we wash our hands before eating bread. On the night of Pesach, it is very important to get children involved. And because the Pasuk tells us, talk to your children. That's why the children ask questions and the adults answer. So therefore, we have certain things we do only to arouse the interest and the curiosity of the children. It doesn't have to mean something special. So throughout the night, we will do things which is halakha, which is part of the law. We will do things which is only a custom. And then we'll do things that are neither a custom nor halakha. It's just to, that the children should be curious and ask, uh, Abba, Ima, mother, father, why are we doing this? Now here, we're going to wash our hands and we're not going to eat the bread yet. Why are we doing that? For the children to ask, Mommy, or, or Tati, why are you washing your hands? Are you not eating the bread, the matzah? Just for them to ask questions, we, we, we wash our hands now. Now we wash our hands this time and we do not say the bracha of al nitilat yadayim. Now we do not say it. We only say al tati yadayim when we wash our hands later on before the bread, before the amotzi, before the matzah. That's urchat. Next pointer is karpas. Karpas, we take the vegetable that we had on the plate. On the plate, we had a vegetable. We said it's either an onion or a celery or a parsley. 
that's a bitter, some kind of a bitter vegetable. And we take that, that bitter vegetable and we dip it into salt water. Salt water represents the, our tears, our crying, and carpas is a bit of vegetables. We did a lot of crying while we were in Egypt. So we want to rem remind ourselves that we had, a, we had enough crying, but we had to remind ourselves that we cried there and our fathers cried there. So we do the carpas, we take the vegetable. It could be a, a some people use a, a potato, some people use an onion, some people use a celery or a parsley, a potato would be okay. And you dip it into salt water and you make a bracha. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Barei Pri Ha'adama. And you eat the vegetable now. Now again, why do we do that? Only for the children to ask, why are you eating a vegetable before eating the meal? First start the meal. So these are you know, two things we do. We wash our hands and we're not eating. We eat a vegetable before the meal. These are two things we only do for the children to ask. Now, let's say we don't have children at home. We're, we're making the seder at night ourselves. If you don't have children, you still do all the same practices. And we'll soon mention here, if you don't have children at your seder, you still ask the questions. Not only the children ask the question, we ask the questions ourselves. So we already went Kadesh and then Urchatz, the second, and then Karpas. The fourth point, point is Yachatz. We said before we had three matzot. Three matzot was one on top of each other with a napkin in between. Matzah, and we break it in two parts. One a larger part, and one a, one a smaller part. We take the, the middle matzah and we divide it in two parts. That is yachatz. What happens, why, why do we divide the, the matzah in two parts? First of all, two pointers there. One part of the matzah, we're gonna, which we're gonna take away, wrap it up, and hide it for the afi koman. Afi koman we ate at the end. So take the middle matzah, you divide it in half, and you take one part you leave there, and the second part you wrap it in a napkin or a cloth, and you hide it. Some people hide it under the pillow, some people hide it elsewhere, some families have the custom that the children try to find it and steal it away and ask for a prize. We have, we take that, that matzah of the, of the yachats and we hide one part. The bigger, the larger part we hide and the smaller part we keep, keep in the matzah on the table. Why do we break the matzah? Because matzah is supposed to resemble as poor man's, poor man's bread. So it resembles poor man's bread by three ways. Number, number one, it has no taste. It's only flour and water, not even salt, no taste. That's a poor man's bread, he, there's no taste to it. Number two, it's not rised. It's very, very flat, that's a poor man's bread. It is told that if the slaves were given matzah to eat because matzah stays in your stomach longer so you don't have to eat again. If you eat bread, after a couple of hours, you're hungry. Matzah keeps you longer, so you don't have to feed him again. And the third reason is, a poor, a poor man has very little to eat. So by breaking the matzah in half, having only a, a small part in the, uh, in the table of the three, that tells us this is a poor, man's, a poor man's bread. He only has a small broken piece. He doesn't even have a full one. So there's three reasons about the matzah. So now we have, the top matzah is a complete one, the middle one is a broken one, and the bottom one is a whole one. So that's yachatz. Now after yachatz comes magid. Magid means to recount, to tell. Before we start telling the Agadah, there's a paragraph very interesting that we do. Before we start saying the Agadah, we say a statement. We invite everybody who needs a meal, come to eat a meal in our heart, in our house. Ironically, today's time, we're not going to do that because you can't invite people at your home in today's times when we're all quarantined. But still, nevertheless, we always show that we always open our hearts and our homes for anybody who's in need. So today's time, how could you fulfill this, uh, this mitzvah 
of inviting people at home, if we know somebody who is out there and needs something, we send them a matzah, we do something that they should feel comfortable there. But we don't have to invite people at home to today's time when we're all quarantined. And at the end of that paragraph, we say something very power powerful. We say, this year we might be as slaves, but the next year we're gonna be free men. This year we're not in our own land. In the coming year we'll be in the land of Israel. We'll be in our own land, in the land of Israel. And if the previous Lubavitch Rebbe says, do we have to wait for next year to go to Israel? No, he says. It means, let's go there now in order for there now, we'll be the next year as well. But we're here now in whatever place we are, whether the United States or Panama or whatever it is, wherever we are, we're celebrating the, uh, the, uh, the Haggadah and the Seder. Now we started Magid by inviting people to our home. Next comes the part of the Magid comes a very interesting point. Now come the questions. The question, the four questions that the children ask. The four questions that the children ask. And the question the children ask us, why are today we're different? Why today we eat bitter herbs? Why today we, we dip? We dip the maror. We dip the, the, the karpas. Why do we lean? Why do we eat matzah? Asking questions. Why? Because we want them to ask questions in order for us to give them the reason why we're celebrating this. Now, in the Ashkenaz community, there's, there was a, there's a line that people would say, the children would say, and my children and my grandchildren say it as well. They say it in Yiddish. Before you start the Manishana, the children say it well by the fragrant fear cautions, which means literally, Father, I want to ask from you four questions. <coughs> this is an introduction to the questions. We say in Yiddish, Tate, which means father or daddy, I want to ask four questions. The Bible Rebbe says a person that doesn't have any children or a person that doesn't have a father. I, I don't have a father. So the Bible Rebbe says, you still say that line and you turn to the Father in heaven and say, Father in heaven, Avinu God in heaven, you're my father. I want to ask you all these questions. I'm asking you this question. Why is today different? So the Bible Rebbe said the same thing. We should act to Hashem, to God, who is our father, as our biological children would ask to us. After the, we, the children ask the four questions, we, the, the adults, try start answering them. But even though if we have no children, we still ask ourselves the question. Now, where is it? What is it? The answer start. The answer start. Avadim, Hayinu. We're telling the children we used to be slaves in Egypt. And they were very sadistic towards us. That's why we, have, we had a bitter life in Egypt. That's why we have the maror, the bitter life, and the karpas. And that's why we have the matzah. But now God took us out of Egypt. Now we're free. So that's why now we're celebrating this holiday. So we're starting to give the answer to the child. Why, what, what's the celebration? The celebration is we, we were, we used to be slaves and now we're free, that's kind of the answer. And then we go through, most of the Haggadah tells us about all the four types of children, just like there are four questions, there are four children. Now the four, the four, the four children are the Chacham, the knowledgeable one, the Rasha, the wicked one, and we have the Tam, the simple one, and the one who She'enid Elisha, he doesn't even know what to ask, he's like dumbfounded. Here comes the Lubavitcher Rebbe says, unfortunately, he says, the East, the, after the Second World War, so the, Jew, the, the World Jewish Congress came up, had a meeting, and he said, we lost, we lost six million people. What should we do? So someone came up with an, with a, with an answer. He says, you know, I have an idea. Let's make a new, new custom that every, every Jewish house at the night of Seder should have an empty seat by the table to commemorate somebody who was lost in the Holocaust. This is this the, the opinion of the World Jewish Congress. And they came to Lubavitcher Rebbe and they said, Lubavitcher Rebbe, what do you see this idea? We want to commemorate that every Jewish home 
by the Seder should have an, one empty seat to commemorate somebody that, that was lost in the, in the Holocaust. And the Bible Trevor answers, great idea, but why keep it empty? Great idea, add another, another chair to the table, but why keep it empty? Have, fill it up with somebody who, who doesn't have a Seder. And he said there are, there are many people who don't have Seder. They, either they're not religious or they don't know what to practice. Fill it up to the, the, the chair. And since then, he encouraged that people should go out and teach people how to make Seder. So we have here those four paragraphs of telling us about the, uh, the, the, the four children that went out that asked their questions. I'm not going to go through every paragraph of the Haggadah, only the 15 pointers. Um, wait, come... Rabbi, one question. Yes. Um, when do you open the door for Eliyahu to come After in? After the meal. We'll get to that. After the meal. I'm going to, put, I'm going to make it a note. Now, Towards the middle of the, after the four, the four children asked their questions, we lift up their, the first, this first cup was, was, we already did the first cup. We're going to drink four cups. The first cup was Kiddush. Now we take the second cup, we lift the cup, and we sing together, Behi Sha'am Dalabotenu. The famous song, Behi Sha'am Dalabotenu. What, what does this paragraph tell us? This paragraph tell us, thank you, God. Every, we know that in every generation, there's somebody who's trying to kill us out. Whether it was Pharaoh in Egypt, whether it was Hitler in, in, in our generation, in every generation, there's somebody who's trying to humiliate us. And only by being connected to you, we are alive. So we lift up that, that second cup and we say, Not only one person in history, try to humiliate us. Every generation is somebody who wants to kill us out. There's, there's Haman in the time of, the, of, of, of Purim. Every generation has somebody. And we're close to God, and you always save us. And so we put down the cup now, and we continue reading the, par the paragraphs. We continue reading the paragraphs until we get to the, the, uh, the recounting of the 10 plagues. The 10 plagues. We'll get to the point that we, we enumerate the Dam, Tzvardeya, Kin, and the Ten Plagues. Now, when we say the Ten Plagues, the Kabbalah tells us wine has a double or contradicting meaning. Wine could be a happy occasion, and wine could mean a case of occasion of curse. So the Kabbalah tells us when we mention the Ten Plagues, Dam, Tzvardeya, Kinim, Arod, so there is, we, we take a drop of, of wine out of our cup and we pour it onto the plate next to us. Some people take our pinky and put our pinky into the, into the wine, if our own cup, and take out a drop of wine when we say each one of the 10 makot. Some don't like to put in the pinky, they just tilt the cup. They take the cup and they tilt it each, one, each time they say dam, tzfardeya, Kinim, they tilted. So we pour out 10 different drops of wine. Those drops that we, that we pour out are, are not good drop, not good wine, the wine of curse. And some have the, the unwritten custom that those wine that were poured out, you kind of put it away and you, 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 uh, you send it to the neighbor of yours who is not Jewish, who's giving you problems, and, and they let him drink it and let him be cursed. Chatsu Shalom. Uh, we, but the rest of the wine is called happy wine. And then we, go, we come to the paragraph of Dayenu. Again, 15 things we thank Hashem. Dayenu means enough. We say we thank Hashem for so many things He did to us. And we say, even if it would have been one thing, it would be enough to thank you, enough to celebrate. 15 things that we celebrate for. That's the song of Dayenu. Once we finish the song of Dayenu, we say a three paragraphs telling us why we, why we had the Pesach, why we eat the Matzah, and why we eat the Maror. Continue with the following paragraph, we say every person in every generation has to show as if we were saved. How do we show that we were saved? When we take the Matzah or the, the cup, and we drink it and we lean on, we lean, we lean with it while, while drinking, showing that we're free men. People who are slaves can't even sit. 
They eat and drink standing because they have to run to help the masters. We sit and we lean and we drink a cup. Rich, rich men people. That shows that we are free. We're showing ourselves that we are also free people. And then we begin to say the Hallel. When we finish the Hallel, now we are washing our hands for the Matzah. The second time, before we, before we start the, the uh, washing, we, we drink the second cup. We make the Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Borei Tri Agafen, and we drink our second cup of wine. Our first Wait, cup. I got yes. lost. Okay, sure. Okay, um, after Pesach, Matzah, Maror, that's after? Okay. We say, right, after that we say the, the first part of the Hallel. Hallelujah. You see that? You see that paragraph? Or Bitzayt Yisrael mi Mitzrayim? After Pesach, he doesn't hear me. After Pesach, Matzah, Maror. Yeah. What, what is it? Three, three paragraphs after that, what do you have? Continue next page. Excellent, excellent. But after next page should be Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah of the Adonai, Hallelujah. That that that's called Hallel. We're praising God for whatever he did for us. And that, that Hallel is going to end with Baruch Ata Adonai Ga'al Yisrael. Shall you have the words Ga'al Yisrael? Mm -hmm. Next page. We're going, yeah. we're going a little too fast? Yeah. No, okay. no, it's good. Okay. okay. So now when we got to Ga'al Yisrael, we take our second cup, we make the, the bracha of Agafen, and we drink our second cup. Our first cup was Kiddush. Our second cup is on the reading of the Haggadah, on the, on the children asking the questions, on the adults giving the answer, on reading those paragraphs. That's the second cup of wine. We're going to drink four cups. The second cup is now. First cup is So Kiddush. here after the Hallel, the, after the, the... second cup. The second cup. The Kiddush, the first. Right. And when is the second cup? By I finish now, the Hallel? Exactly. After you finish the Hallel, you drink the second cup. After we, we drank the second cup, we wash our hands, but this time we're washing our hands and we make the bracha of al nitilat yadai because we're ready to eat the matzah. The first time we washed our hands, it was just to get the curiosity of the children. Now we're ready to eat the matzah. So when we wash our hands, now we make the bracha. Some people have the custom that somebody brings the, the water, the water basin to the table and you wash at the table. Or you don't have to do that. You can go to the sink and wash at the regular. You wash our hands and we make the bracha al mitilat yadayim and then we hold the matzah. We, we had three, three matzot, we said. The, the first, the top one is a whole one, the middle one is a broken one, and the bottom one is a whole one again. We hold the matzah and we make two brachot. We make the, reg, the regular bracha we make for bread and the new bracha, the additional bracha for matzah. So the first bracha we make Hamotzi lechem min haaretz, which literally mean, means that God helps us, and He took out bread from the from the ground. How so? We grew in the field. We, we grew kernels of wheat, and then we took the kernels of wheat and we ground them. We made flour. And we made bread. So that's that's a regular bracha. The second bracha is we thank Hashem that He commanded us to eat matzah al achilat matzah. So let me just make an a, a observation, please to remember. When you're going to prepare cups of wine, don't prepare, don't prepare big cups. You have to drink, the, the, the minimum to drink is three and a half ounces. So it is best to drink the whole cup. Rather than take a big cup and only drink a little bit, try to find a smaller cup. The only thing, 
you have to drink is three and a half ounces. As I mentioned earlier, best to be red wine. It doesn't have to be high, high percentage of, of alcohol. Uh, the best should be whatever you can. If you can't drink any alcohol, you want to drink grape juice, that will be okay. Best better should be wine, but the, the amount is three and a half ounces. Don't get big cups. Now we're going to eat the matzah. So we, we made the two brachot, hamotzi lechem in ha'aretz, and the matzah. How much matzah we have to eat? You have to eat matzah, the equivalent of two ounces. Two ounces of matzah. How do you measure ounces today's times? Some people would say, would say that a regular small size of a postcard, of a postcard, that is, that's the amount of one, of, of, of one ounce, of the size of a postcard. So figure out that you have to eat two sides, two kind of postcards, kind of a third of a matzah. Perhaps that would be the, the measurement. Two ounces of matzah is the minimum we have to eat. Okay, after we ate the matzah, now we get to the, now remember one thing. When we drink the wine, we're supposed to drink it leaning on our left side. When we eat the matzah, again on the left side. The left side, wide left side, because we shouldn't, have, we shouldn't, God forbid, have any food coming down into our windpipe and we'll choke. So we, we lean on the left side, but that's only by the drink of the wine and about the eating of the matzah. But when it comes to eating the maror, the bitter herbs, we don't lean because the maror is, is, resembles bitterness and leaning shows us on freedom. It's a contradiction. So now after the matzah, we eat the maror. Take the bitter herbs. You can have the horseradish or the romaine letters or the endives, whatever is easy for you to get in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the supermarket or in the uh, fruit stores. Yes, yes. Um, yes, Charlie. Tell me again, we lean, I didn't hear because in the, the video when we went. Lean, when we lean, we lean only by the wine drinking and by the eating of the matzah. matzah. We, eat, okay. we lean on the left side. Why? Leaning represents the, the kings of old, when they, when they ate, they ate on sofas. They didn't eat sitting. A, a slave doesn't sit when he eats. He stands and he has to rush and eat and go to work. S uh, sitting comfortably and leaning shows on freedom. You're, you're a free man and you sh you're sitting like a king. But we do that only by the wine drinking and by the matzah. By the, by the maror, we don't lean. Why don't we lean? Because maror is bitter. And leaning shows on, on uh, freedom. Okay, thank you. Well, when we have the maror, again, whatever is easy to get, something which had a bitter herb, a bitter herb. We take the maror in our hand and we make the bracha, asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav etzivanu al achilat maror. Thank, thank, thank Hashem, thank God for giving us the commandment to eat the bitter, the bitter vegetable. Now we take that bitter vegetable and we dip it into, into the haroset on our Seder plate we had charoset. Charoset is, is, the, is the mortar made out of walnuts, apples, pears, wine, and some dates, and that whole, whole mixture, the whole dip. We take the bitter herbs, the maror, and we dip it into the charoset, and we eat that together. Bitter herbs and the charoset, which is the, the, uh, the reminders of the heavy work that we had. Okay. What does it mean? What does it mean achilat? Achilat means to eat. Achilat means to eat. Eat. To eat. Akomer. Uh. Okay. So now we finished matzah and maror. Here comes something very interesting. Some people say that in the, that in the times of the temple. We were supposed to eat the matzah, the maror, not individual, together in a sandwich. So we had the matzah and the maror and a piece of meat from the, from the sacrifice of the Paschal sacrifice. So we, we don't have the sacrifice now, 
But since there's an opinion that we're supposed to eat the matzah and the marot together, not separately, so now we get to the korech. Korech means sandwich. Now there's a, there's a, there's a uh, kind of an old Jewish joke. Who is the, who's the one who invented sandwiches? And he said, the Jews. Why? The Jews wanted to eat something, and they had no fork or knife. So they put the meat between the two breads, and they ate it that way without touching the meat. So here we have korech. Korech means a sandwich. We take the, the, we take the matzah, and in the matzah we put the maror, again. We dip the maror in the haroset. Now we have it in a sandwich. Before we did it individual. We did matzah separately and maror separately. Now we're doing it in a sandwich. And while we have the sandwich ready, ready we say the next line, which says, Kain asa hilel. This is the way Hillel did it. <clears throat> and he did it, he did it, that he used to put in a sandwich part of the meat of the karbam, of, of the sacrifice, part of the matzah, part of the maror, all together. And he had it as a sandwich. So we do that now as a sandwich. So now we did it both ways. We did it individual and in the sandwich. All right, now for the best part of the night. The next part of the night is by some people the best part. The best part is now is Shulchan Orech, a set table of a festive meal. We start our festive meal. Now, we did already two cups of wine. We already ate the matzah and the maror individually. We already ate the matzah and the maror together. Again, the matzah, we eat lenient. The sandwich, much we eat when we leave. I have the custom that the first thing in the meal should be the bo a boiled egg. We take the egg that we had, the boiled egg that we had on the, on the plate, and we eat the egg. Why do we eat the egg? Again, to commemorate, we are now celebrating festivities. But with the festivities, remember, we are lacking the real joy. We are not in Jerusalem. We don't have the, the temple. So the first thing we eat is the egg. And then we eat whatever we have. We, we eat fish and meat. The only thing we don't eat on the, on the night of Pesach is roasted meat. Why don't we eat roasted meat? It shouldn't be roasted on the fire because it shouldn't look like people might think that I had a sacrifice in my backyard and I'm eating part of my sacrifice. We're not allowed to make a sacrifice out of the temple. So you can eat anything. You can eat cooked, baked, but roasted. The, the night of Pesach, we don't eat roasted meat. It shouldn't resemble, resemble by people who don't know. They might think that I made a sacrifice and I'm eating a part of the sacrifice because the Paschal sacrifice was eaten only roasted. So for, at this meal, we eat fish and salad, whatever you want but not roasted meat. It can be cooked, baked, or any other way. So we eat a full meal. Roasted, roasted is in, Rabbi? Yes. Roasted is in the grill. On the grill, right. So that, the night of Pesach. Like I can put a meat in the oven. Correct. That's baked. Okay. Yeah. We call it roast, but it's baked. Correct. So we eat a full meal. Once we, we eat a full meal, and we're all, we're all full, then comes Tzafon, we take out the hidden matzah. If you remember the beginning, we took the middle matzah, we broke it in two parts, and the larger part, we, we hid it somewhere. We hid it somewhere. If, if, if the children did not find it yet, the Afik, it's called the Afikoima, the dessert. We, have, we are so full now, we ate matzah, maror, and a full meal, and now we're told, take out that hidden piece of matzah, the one that we, that we put in hiding, and eat it now. On a full stomach, eat that matzah. All of it. No, only, all of only, it. only two ounces worth. Whatever you have, you don't. You can often you can share it with whoever's with you, but you have you have to eat the part of the, the afikoma. And what we do with the rest? The rest. You what do we tomorrow. do with the rest? You, you can do it for tomorrow. You put it for tomorrow for the next day. Okay. Once we once we did the the Afikoman, which is called the Tzafon. The next 
The next pointer is Beirach. We are ready for the grace after meal. The grace after meal. The grace after meal is the third cup of wine. We already drank two cups. One cup is Kiddush. The second cup is right at the end of Hallel. Now, by the grace after meal, we put a third cup of wine. Our third cup of wine. And we say, we do the Bekat Amazon. Shai, do you have the Bekat Amazon? We do the Bekat Amazon? Yeah. Okay. Yes. After Bekat Amazon, we make, a, again, the Bracha of Agafen, and we drink our third cup. Again, reminder, every time we drink a cup, we lean. After Bekat Amazon, the end of the Bekat Amazon, you'll see, it says, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pri Agafen. Are we up to there? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, sure. What's the next paragraph after the Hagafen? Halel. Halel. One paragraph before Halel. Shfoch. Shfoch Ah, Okay, this is important. You asked me before, Shabbat. Right. Before the Shvor HaMoscha, we do something very interesting and traditional. We are going to drink four cups of wine. We drank three already. Again, one is Kiddush. The second one is by after finishing the Haggadah. The third one is after the grace after meals. We're going to, we're going to drink a fourth one soon. But now, now before saying Shvor, we take a fifth cup. And the fifth cup, people have the cost now largest cup in the house. And that cup is called Kois Shal Eliyahu, the cup for, for, for Eliyahu Hanavi. We take a cup, we fill it up with wine. In my house, I have a big cup, but actually a whole quart of wine filled up the cup. And you fill up the cup at this point and you put it at the center of the table. And we say, this is the cup we're giving for, for Eliyahu Hanavi. He's going to come in and he's going to drink with this cup. At this is the fourth, the fourth cup. This is this is going to be the fifth. Four we drink. Koshil Eliyahu, we're not going to drink. The four, but after the Halel, that we drink the third, and then after the Bekat it, Amazon is the third. Right? After the Halel, no, after the 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 Birkat Amazon is the third. The third, okay. Now and then the fourth. The fourth is going to be at the end. At the end at the end of the, of the whole seder. But before the fourth, we do something different. We do something which is the fifth. We're gonna put now a cup for Eliyahu Hanavi. At this point, we put a cup, I can't hear. Uh, 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 Rebecca can't hear. Mm. When? I can't hear. Rebecca, you are mute. I can't hear you. Yeah, Shai, you want to ask? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you want to ask something? Okay, so now that I that I filled up the cup for Eliyahu and Avi, now I did that, I take a candelabra with one candle, or if you have a larger candelabra, as long as, as, long as the candles or put into it strong. I, I take, whoever could, whoever could do that, you take the candelabra with, the, with a lit candle and you go to the opening of your house. You go to the front door of your house and you open the door of your house. Doing that, we invite Eliyahu and Avi to our house. When we open the door with the candle, we say this paragraph of Shvoch HaMascha. And we're inviting Eliyahu and Avi. I wish and I hope that we invite Eliyahu and Avi to come and let him stay by us and not leave us. Let him come to us. Eliyahu and Avi is the one who's going to give us all the good news. So at this point, again, we, we, we fill up a cup for him and it's called Kos Shil Eliyahu. We, we, we go to the door, to the front door if we can. Open the door 
say this paragraph, and after you finish the paragraph, you can close the door. He's in, he's in already. Now, I remember as a kid, when we were young children, after this, this paragraph, our father would kind of shake the table and tell, tell all of us, look at the cup of Aliyah. Look at Leo's cup. He just drank it. The cup of Leo is there throughout the whole time until the end of the Seder. Okay, now we invite Eliyahu into our table, and we sat down again. We put back, we put down the, the candelabra with the candles, and we're sitting down again. We're sitting down again, and we, we continue the, the Haggadah with the remainder of the Halal. It doesn't say, it doesn't. Yes. I'm listening, yeah. It doesn't say anything about Eliyahu, this paragraph. It doesn't say anything. It just says, this paragraph says, we're asking God to throw your, your wrath, throw your anger at other people, not at us. So that's, that's what we say when we open the door? Correct. And I mean, and if we it, just it, say, just say, Yao, welcome? We, we say, uh, we, we don't say anything. By opening the door and holding the candle, we're welcoming in. We don't have to say anything. Mm, okay. And the Midrash tells us that God told the, the, the Moshe Rabbeinu, Eliyahu Navi is going to come to every Jewish home two times. When? Every, every Seder, every Seder, we invite him, he comes. And by every Brit Milah, we put a kisei, a cheer for Eliyahu. So twice in our life, we, we get Eliyahu to come to our home. By a Brit Milah, we have a cheer for Eliyahu. And when we make a Seder, we call him into the, to the table. Okay, he's mm -hmm. with us now. We finished the, we finished the, the book of Haggadah, Halel, until the end. When we get so to, after we read all of that, lo lanu, lo lanu. Correct, correct. If you read all of that, um, lo lanu, Adonai, lo lanu. Yes, yes. If it's too much to read, read as much as you can. As much as you can. You don't have to overdo it. As much as you can, until you get to the last paragraph of Ubechen, Yishtabach Shimcha, Yishtabach Shimcha. You have the last paragraph, Ubechen, Yishtabach Shimcha. And at the end, at the end? It's, it's, it could be it's not at the end of the end, but it's toward, that's where the formal part finishes. It says, After, after, um, after Odula or Naikitov, yes. after that? After? after. What's the next paragraph you have? After the Kirlolam has do, then it comes. Nishmat. Veilu pinu maleshira kayam, shearim titroman. Continue next page. Ve mik halor ribevot ameha beit Israel. Next page. Kenish tabach shim halad malkeinu. Kenish tabach. This is the last important paragraph. That's where we, we drink, after that, after that, the fourth cup. Exactly. After that, the fourth cup. Now, after we drink the fourth cup, and we say the Agafen, and we, we, we lean on the left side, <clears throat> the only thing we have to say now is, the Shana Haba Birushalayim. You have it next page? That is the formal end. You, there's more things people say. People say shira shirim or other things, but this is the formal end. After the fourth cup, we say the shana Shalayim, and then we take the cup of the cup of of, uh, of wine which we pour for Ali of Aliyah and Avi, and we pour it back into the bottle. Wait, 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 I got lost. Where's uh, Eli? Right, right, okay. Mm -hmm. Right after the Yishtabach, you say the Hagafen, right? Mm -hmm. After Hagafen, after Yishtabach? Here's, again, Kiram has do, again. No, no, no. Kol haite barech et shimcha Adonai Eloheinu. After two pages, let's get two pages after that, let's see. Ubechein ishtabach. 
That's the end. That's the end of the seder. That's the fourth cup. That's the end of the seder. Right after that bracha, you just say one line: the shana babi yishalayim. Next year in yishalayim. All right, but I don't see that. Wait a minute. Okay, sure. Okay, this last page I have here, Yishtabach, Shim Halad, Malkeinu Ala Melech Haladol. Then it comes. That is the last page of the book. That's the last page. Ilwa Kol Masea, Olam Baru Hatadonai, Melech Mechulal Betishvachot. Here is the the. And then it says the Agafen. What's next? What's the next line? Baru Hatadonai Le Melech Olam Ala Gefen Bial Priya Gefen Bial Tenuvat Asade. Before, before, did you say Baruch Atah Adonai Alehinu Melech Alam Borei Priya Gafen? Right before that? Yes. Uh -huh. that's, that's the end of the formal seder. Hagafen. That's the end. Make a mark. That's the end. But I don't see. I don't see that Yerushalayim. That that probably is the last page. The last page of the book. Again, we say again, all again, Al Priya Gavna Baruha Tawana Lares, but Al Priya Gavna. Okay, that, that, that's that is saying that after the fourth cup. Next, but look at the last page of the of the, of the book. After had, after had Gadia, but all the songs. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you say there? Shanaba. Okay. No, I have like the the songs. The songs is, is, is additional to the formal the seder. The sh no, what, no, between no. the hagafen and the hagadiyah, someone should say the line three words, or you write it down by pen. Leshana haba'a birushalayim. You got it. Nishmat. But after Nishmat, again. After Nishmat. After Nishmat, when we got to Nishtabach and you had the Alagafen, the Priyagafen. Mm -hmm. After that should be three words. Somewhere should be three words. The Shana Ba Bireshalayim. Now, you could write it on a, on a, on a, on a, on a sticky paper, but it definitely is going to be there somewhere. The Chat Gadya and all the songs are an additional. You can sit and continue that, or you can stop by there. No, I don't. Ah, This is like a Birkat Amazon. Yeah, no, after that. After that. What's that? Gafna means the vineyards. Let me show you. Shall we drink another cup there? That's the fourth cup. If we just finish the fourth cup. After the fourth cup, is we say the three words. Write down the three words. Lashana haba birushalayim. Okay. Yeah, but I don't have it here. It, that, it's it's probably you'll, you'll find it soon. It'll definitely be there. Maybe after the chagadia. You're, Rebecca, you are mute. I can't hear you. Take go, go off mute. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna find it. Okay. Mm 
No, it's not in this book. Uh, uh, probably. Okay. So write it down. The Shana Haba I want to mention something very, very interesting, very important. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I found it. Okay. Rebecca, you're, you're on mute. Unmute yourself so I can hear you. When we go to, to the door to invite the Yaw Hanavi, it is mentioned in very mystical Kabbalah that you can, you can ask in undertone. You don't have to say it loud. You can ask whatever you want in undertone to Eliyahu Anavi. You can ask health, wealth, family, whatever you need, you can ask for that. You don't have to say it out loud in, in, in loud words, but when you go to the door and welcome him, you can ask whatever, we should ask whatever we want from him, that he should be our, our agent to bring, bring us all the good news. It was our pleasure okay. to sit together, and hopefully we should sit together physically sometime in a better situation. And I hope you, we'll talk Rabbi. again maybe before, the, before the, the, the Yom Tov. In any case, a, a happy and healthy, stay healthy, and a kosher Pesach, and anything else that can be helpful, we're here. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you so much, and I'm okay. happy that you're all healthy now. And thank God, thank God. Amen, amen, amen. How are you? Good. Well, I'm fine. Thanks. Yes. Taking care. Rebecca, how are you? I don't hear you. Okay. Take care. Bye, Rabbi. Thank you. Have a, a pleasure. With all the family. Amen.